Today I wanted to introduce our new billet transmission mount upgrade for the 2020 up Ford Explorer. This is the stock one which we are making better. This is uh, very wobbly as you can see. I can compress everything with my hand. While this is great for avoiding all NVH getting to the cabin, it is not good for performance. So what we've done is we've made in a similar fashion to our drive shaft center support bearing upgrades, we have made a two part assembly that clamps together around interchangeable bushings. Here I actually have the performance bushings installed, which are the kind of the middle of the road ones. Um, we also have our softer street ones and our harder track ones. Um, I think most people are going to end up with the performance ones, but you can actually at checkout, you can mix and match these. You can, you can get all three sets if you want, pick two of the sets or just pick one set. Um, you're also able to buy these down the road if you want to switch them out. To prove all this out, we brought in a Ford Explorer ST development vehicle, launched it on the street a bunch of times with the camera watching the exact movement of the transmission and the way the trans mounts are reacting, and we are comparing the stock to each of our three densities. We have some motion tracking analysis to show you and we'll get to that shortly. So we've gone out and we've collected all our data now. We have videos doing launches with the stock trans mount, our street bushings, our performance bushings, and our track bushings. And now we're gonna Check out the videos here and do some motion analysis and see just exactly how they all perform. So this is a program called Canovia. It's a pretty common uh, open source motion analysis software. So here, we, what we're basically gonna do is we're just gonna pick a point on the left and the right side of this that is attached to the transmission. So we've added motion tracking points on each of these bolts and then we're gonna do the motion tracking analysis and then export the data we're basically looking for the vertical movement of the bolts. So this is a launch, a one-two shift, which is kind of when it shakes a lot. And then there's some bumps on the road. And then we basically end around the top of second gear. You can see how these just follow the bolts and they're recording data the whole time. We're not bothering to scale this because everything's going to be the same. It's all going to be recorded in number of pixels. So we're just looking for relative performance increases. So now we're gonna do the street bushings, which are the blue ones, and just watch how much smoother this whole thing gets. So these will be the performance bushings, which is the gray ones. And you'll see even less motion here. And you can see how it's really damping, like even just like when we're going over bumps in the road or doing the shift, you can really see how there's a lot less movement. It's just more damping down there. And then finally, we'll go on to the track bushings. Almost no movement at all now. So with all of our motion analysis complete, then we will export everything to a CSV file, and then we're importing it into Excel. I'll show you that data now. So on the plots here, we have OEM is the red line, street is a blue, performance is gray, and black is track. And we're simply plotting time versus the position of the left and right bolts. A uh, negative number means the bolt moves down and a positive number means it's going up. Along here, this is a, the individual movements of each bolt. You have your left bolts up on the top. They tend to move very little or even a little bit upwards as the engine rotates. And then the right bolts always move downwards. So you can see here a lot less movement with the upgraded bushings versus the stock one, which has quite a lot of movement. And then you'll also see, I think it's really important to point out here, just how the curves start to react in the beginning here. If you look, the red stock one does some weird stuff at the beginning. It's really just following the engine. It's not really like putting up any resistance to initial movement. And you can see that definitely with the steepness of this initial curve and how soon it starts moving. Whereas once you have the upgraded trans mount in, it really holds on a little bit more before it starts to move down. So you're gonna feel that in your pedal and your seat of your pants because it's literally like providing resistance to movement right away. And that's what's gonna cut down a lot of that kind of like shakiness that you see in the OEM one when we were watching that video. 
So scrolling down to look at the combined vertical displacement numbers, the trend becomes a lot more obvious here. Your OEM mount is basically moving, we'll say 35 units, it's pixels on our screen, but 35 units down versus street only moves an average of about 25 by the very end. And then you've got 15 and about 12 for your track. So just jumping from OEM to street, you're seeing a huge performance gain and then moving again from street to performance is a large gain. And then you have a little bit less of a gain moving to track. Um, but I wanna look at the actual like shape of these curves and explain what's going on here. So basically if you have a steep curve down, that means the whole transmission is moving very quickly down with little resistance. So this is kind of our like launch area here, right? And you're seeing that this basically runs down and then runs into this like very like sharp kind of like bottom out area here, which is gonna be like a huge hit on the drive line, um, which is more likely to break something specifically more likely to break traction if not an axle or something like that. Whereas with the, with the upgraded trans mount, you're seeing that there's a, a more gradual lead in and then you have less of this kind of like bottom out um, kind of thing that's going on. So, and then, so we're getting into first gear then, we're kind of going through first gear here, and then this is the, the shift to second. And then the, once you're in second, there's even more torque in the drive line because the torque kind of has nowhere to go. Um, you're in a, you know, a higher gear, you have worse leverage. So all the torque kind of gets like bound up in the drive line. And this is where we're kind of seeing our peak deflection numbers. So this quick unchecked movement, this is really what is gonna like cause things to break and cause you to lose traction and just provide like really like inconsistent launches, um, especially if you're right on the limit of grip. This reduced latency in the drive line, when you're sitting in the driver's seat, this is just gonna feel like more direct throttle response. The power is getting to the ground sooner. It's more direct, more linear. And when you have a heavy car capable of upwards of 700 horsepower, getting your power to the ground directly without building up a bunch of slack in the drive line is really important for maintaining your actual other drivetrain components, such as axles, drive shaft, other things that may be prone to failure as you get into these higher power numbers. And if you're chasing numbers, the sooner you can get the power to the ground, the sooner the car starts moving, it means faster 60 foot, faster eighth miles, and faster in the quarter. So as you can see, regardless of which option you choose, each was a noticeable increase over the performance of the stock trans mount. If you'd like to pick up a set of these, you can click the link here or down in the description. Thanks so much for watching.